I often refer to the Bob White as the canary of the prairie. Now let's think about that just a minute. The coal miners used to use a canary as a barometer to the conditions of the mine, and they knew that if the canary died, then the oxygen situation was threatening them as well. If we have a situation where we have abundant Bob White quail, and we're very lucky, fortunate here at the Rolling Plains Quail Research Ranch, nearly anywhere we stop during May and June, if we begin to count quail, we'll hear anywhere from five to 15 different roosters, and we'll hear up to 150 calls in a five minute period. That's basically one per second. But in a lot of country, the quail is more of an oldie but a goodie. You just don't have them, and they're excited when they hear one or two Bob Whites. So I contend that again, as we manage country for quail, that we're benefiting a lot of species that are never hunted. So they're the recipients of a lot of generosity and a lot of manpower, and they're riding on the coattails of the Bob White. I would give you several examples of this. A good illustration of what I'm talking about is if you look at the population decline of the Bob White throughout its historic range in the southeastern United States, it would be on a trajectory about like that. And then if you begin to look at some of the other grassland songbirds, and I'm talking about things like dick sissels, grasshopper sparrows, meadowlarks, cast and sparrows, a lot of those species are on the same trajectory. So it means that something's happening with the system. And if we can fix the system, we can fix the, the population woes of many of those birds simultaneously. Now, I would argue to you that most people are much more interested in hearing the iconic whistle of the Bob White than they are that of a cast and sparrow. So if we can use the quail as an icon and be, again, able to manage for them, then by default, we're going to get a lot of those other critters as well. A little bit further south or east, we can even talk about threatened and endangered species that are benefited by Bob White management. Here at the Rolling Plains Quail Research Ranch, we have an abundant population of Texas horned lizards, horny toads. We work with the Dallas Zoo. They come out and they count the horny toads, and they're just as excited when they've seen 10 or 15 horny toads on around as I am if I see 10 to 15 coveys of quail. The type of habitat we're creating for the Bob White is benefiting the horned lizard. If we go south down to the Texas Hill Country, it's the black cap vireo, an endangered songbird. When I see a black cap vireo habitat and they point it out to me, I said, that's not vireo habitat, that's bob white quail habitat. Why not manage for the quail, which comes along without any political baggage, and then you get the black cap vireo. Further in the southeast, it might be the red cockaded woodpecker, another endangered species. So again, by managing a landscape for bob whites, you're number one, you're creating a landscape that people can better appreciate because of the call of the Bob White. And by doing so, because the Bob White acts as an umbrella species, if you manage for quail, a lot of things benefit, you're accomplishing many objectives with one non-political stone. So I encourage you to be proud of the fact that you're a manager or a student of quail because not only are you benefiting the Bob White, but you're benefiting a lot of other critters out there that will never be hunted.